good morning and welcome to United in Christ Lutheran Church's digital web space. We are so glad that you're here to join with us as we continue in this Advent season of preparation and waiting and anticipation. Thank you. Thank you for being here as we enter into this third week now together in this time of Advent. Uh, we'll be looking forward to hearing from Chad Hirschberger this morning as he leads us in preaching, as he comes down from Camp Mount Luther to join us. Uh, but we're glad to, you are here with worship with us in worship today. It's a dreary day outside, gang, and my mouth has just like not woken up with all this rain. So I'm glad you're here. We're glad you're here. We're glad a spot picked out for you with Michelle up front here this morning. Uh, but we'll begin starting in just a few minutes. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to United in Christ Lutheran Church as we continue in this, our season of Advent, now officially three Sundays in, in this time of anticipation, in this time of waiting, in this time of preparation. Thank you. Thank you for being here to be a part of this process, a part of this season, one with another in worship this morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements as we get started with worship this morning. Just a few reminders. First, uh, that this coming Tuesday is our monthly Oaks Gathering, our senior center. Uh, we'll be gathering downstairs in the Fellowship Hall at 10 a.m. this coming Tuesday morning. Uh, at the end of the week, uh, we are looking forward to joining together with our neighbors from Christ's Lutheran for a time of Christmas caroling through Lewisburg. Uh, we'll be gathering together down at Christ Lutheran at 6 p.m. That's at 100 uh, South 3rd Street. Uh, and we'll be making our way through town, caroling all together. Now, here's the thing. Uh, a whole bunch of you came out for our Beers and Carols event this past Wednesday night at Rusty Rail. So I know you have the voices in you, okay? Uh, so now's the time to put them together once more as we travel around town through Lewisburg. That's this coming Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Uh, if you do plan to join us, there's a sign-up sheet downstairs in the Fellowship Hall. Please check that out and put your name on it as you head out from the building this morning. Uh, as well as you make your way out from the building this morning, please be sure to stop by your church mailboxes down in the, the hallway of the education wing uh, where you will find your uh, offering envelopes for the 2024 calendar year. Uh, if you would like your offering to be uh, uh, recorded in the next year, you'll want to have those envelopes on hand so that Terry can do the good work uh, of counting all of that for you as we go through the year. So please be sure to pick those up. If you do not have a church mailbox uh, or you know someone who does not, the extra envelopes are downstairs in the back of the fellowship hall uh, so you can find them there as well. Terry did a great job of getting those organized for us this week. Uh, I think that's almost all for this week, but I think that that means that it's the quiet before the storm. Uh, because in just about a week and a half, we are going to be all systems go as we prepare for our Christmas celebrations here at United in Christ. Uh, and to that end, there are a number of opportunities to engage in this Christmas season, to engage in some Christmas worship over the next few weeks. The first actually occurs on Wednesday, December 20th at 7 p.m., where we will once more be holding our blue Christmas service. This is a, a worship service that is designed to take place in the midst of the holiday season, in the midst of the hustle and bustle, but it's a service that recognizes that for not everyone is enjoying the season with as much tinsel wrapping and bows on top as, the, as what the commercials might like you to think. Uh, this is a service that is designed specifically and with in mind uh, those who have lost loved ones in the past year or for whom the holidays are made more difficult by the loss of loved ones. Um, if you would like to join us for that service, please know that all are invited to do so. Uh, this year, the service will be taking place at Christ's Lutheran at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, December 20th. Uh, we'll look forward to gathering with you all. And if you know someone else who may benefit from such a service, please be sure to share the details of that with them uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, as we finally make our way towards Christmas Eve, then, there are still multiple opportunities to engage in some Christmas worship on that day. 
On Sunday, December 24th, we will gather for worship here at United in Christ first at 10 a.m. for a faith and fun Christmas Eve service. This will be a family-friendly service. We'll get the kids up and moving about and engaged over the course of the service all together. Uh, but that'll be at 10 a.m. Christmas Eve morning. And then later in the day, we'll gather together for our candlelight services once at 6 p.m. here in the building and again at 11 p.m. here in the building. Uh, so if you would like to join in those services, or share those as widely as you are able. That'll be at 10 a.m., 6 p.m., and 11 p.m. all on Christmas Eve. If you need help remembering all of that, go downstairs in the fellowship hall. There are little uh, handouts that you can take home with you. Stick them on your fridge when you get home. Or give them to someone you know who would be invited to be a part of these services together. Uh, you can find them scattered across the table down in the fellowship hall, but please be sure to grab some of those on your way out and invite your loved ones to join us for those Christmas Eve services. Again, 10 a.m., 6 p.m., and 11 p.m. Uh, but then the fun doesn't even stop there. Just as a reminder that in this place, when we gather for worship the next Sunday, December 31st, for our Sunday in Christmas, that will be our pajama worship service again. So if you see any discounted uh, Christmas pajamas at Target over the next few days, you're going to want to pick those up. So you can join us in true festive spirit uh, on the 31st of December. I, I think that's almost all the announcements that I have for us. Do you have any announcements to share with us as we head into worship this morning? Wonderful. Then uh, as a final kind of note, a great big thank you to Chad Hirschberger, who is joining us from Camp Mount Luther uh, and is preaching for us this morning. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time and being with us in the midst of this season of preparation. This will be a great joy uh, to hear from you today. Uh, and thank you all as well for still being here as a part of this process together. Uh, our service this morning begins with a prelude followed by the confession and forgiveness. For now, I ask simply that we remain seated. That we take this time to center ourselves for worship. That we might breathe in the presence of the Spirit in this place. So that when we leave this place, we do so with newfound joy and hope and strength. To continue seeking God and serving God in all that we do. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you. 
Would you please rise in spirit or in body? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. Amen. Amen. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance. Trusting this promise of grace, let us confess our sin. Everlasting God, you love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear, greed, and self-centeredness that make us reluctant to work against oppression. We are complicit in systems of exploitation. We choose comfort over courage. We are careless with creation's bounty. Look upon us with mercy. Turn our hearts again to you. Make Make us us glad glad to do your will and and to walk walk in your ways for the sake of your waiting world. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with robes of righteousness. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal and God's blessing rests upon us all. Amen. Let's join together in singing our opening hymn, O Lord, How Shall I Meet You, found on page four of the bulletin.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. David, come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to me. of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. first reading for today is taken from the, from the book of Judges, the 13th chapter, beginning with the second verse. Now there was a certain man of Zerah of the tribe of Danites, whose name was Manoah. His wife was bearing, having born no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Although you are barren, you have borne no children. You shall conceive and bear a son. Now be careful not to drink wine or strong drink or to eat anything unclean. For you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor is to come to his head. For the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth. It is he who shall begin to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, A man of God came to me, and his appearance was like that of an angel of God, most awe-inspiring. I did not ask him where he came from, and he did not tell me his name. But he said to me, You shall conceive and bear a son. So then drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth to the day of his death. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Praise to you, O God, our salvation who is near. You hold us in our waiting and keep us awake to the world. You show up in our lives at unexpected times. Bless us as we light this candle to keep vigil for your arrival. We trust that even though we do not know the day or the hour, you hurry to gather all people to your peace. Amen. Amen. for us. 
As we get ready to read the gospel reading, I would like you to imagine that you are Mary in this story. And when we get to verse 46, and I say, and Mary said, I would like you to read the remainder of the um, part where Mary is talking with me down to verse number 55. So, the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said... My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lonely. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in promise of his mercy, according to the promises he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months, and then returned to her home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward. Children and young at heart. Come on. What you doing? (laughs) Not much? Something's supposed to happen? Why are you all sitting here? (laughs) Did you hear what she said? She said... They're waiting for me to talk. Ah, what's the key word there? No, I will talk. (laughs) What's another good key word? Can I please talk? You are waiting, right? What What are we doing right now other than right now waiting? Are we waiting for something else to happen soon? Christmas. 
What happens on Christmas? It's Jesus' birthday. birthday, right? And so these weeks before Christmas, which we call in the church Advent, are a time of waiting. Santa. And Santa comes too, right? You're waiting for Santa, right? Yeah. What kind of things do we do to get ready as we wait for Christmas? Yeah. Decorate our trees. You have lots of trees in the church here too. We just put our tree up last night. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Lights on the trees. Do you have other decorations at home too? Yeah, we put it on like a roof. Roof. Okay. Lights on your roof. Sometimes in the church, normally every new we do caroling. Okay, caroling. So go out and visit people and carol and spread some holiday cheer, right? Celebrate the holidays. Um, you forget. All in preparation for Christmas. Some Your parents might do some baking or cooking, right? Because you have company over. And we're all waiting for Jesus to come, right? Is waiting hard? It can be. But guess what? Do you know what? Two weeks ago, you started here to celebrate the season of Advent, which is this season of waiting. And guess what's two weeks from today? Christmas Eve. So what does that mean? We have two weeks already gone and two weeks to come. We're right in the middle middle of waiting, aren't we? Does that make you excited? Does that make you stressed out, frustrated? (laughs) Yeah. So in this season of waiting, this is sometimes it's hard to wait, right? But we know that something good is coming, right? And I don't know about you, but sometimes this waiting and this anticipation for Christmas to happen is kind of more exciting than Christmas itself. Do you agree? Christmas, is, Christmas comes and goes and then it's over. But this time of excitement and waiting is sometimes just as good. So, what I want you to remember is this today. Even in our waiting, we know what's going to happen. That Jesus is going to come as a baby in Bethlehem. Right? And we can be... What's a big P word that we can be? Not present. Patient. We can be patient because we know that Jesus is going to come. And we know Jesus is going to come again. After Jesus died and was resurrected, Jesus told us that he would come back again. So we're also waiting for that too. So let's be patient as we wait. Because guess what? Christmas is only two weeks away. All right. Thank you very much. There are papers for you to color, I understand. So... Come show me what you do. (laughs) It's been a couple months since I've been here. When I was growing up and we, in my home congregation, when the beautiful cries of a baby were happening in the congregation, the pastor that baptized me would always say, ah, yes, here's a future member of the choir. (laughs) So get him in the choir. How do you do it? How do you do what Mary did? You know the story. The angel Gabriel comes down and says, Hey, favored one, the Lord's with you. How would you respond to that? Shake your head no. (laughs) 
Seriously, I want to know. How would you respond to that? Not well. Not well. Not sure. Not sure. Probably cry. Probably cry. <laughs> Pretty confused. <laughs> would you have maybe a surprised face? I might even have a surprised face, Claire. Okay. Scripture tells us that Mary had a similar reaction to how you would react. She was perplexed and she was confused. But Gabriel says this, don't worry, be happy. God wants to do something fantastic through you. You're going to have a baby, Jesus. And he will be the king of a new world that will not end. Mary may be a lowly, humble woman, but she's not dumb. She asks the angel, how can this be? Because I am a virgin. She probably knew she had Gabriel in a trap. But the angel says, God can do it. The Holy Spirit's coming and you will conceive and this is going to happen. Believe me. Oh, yeah. Gabriel also throws in another surprise for good measure. You know, Elizabeth, he says, your old relative, well, she has conceived a son. She thought she couldn't have kids, but no. This also shows you that nothing is impossible for God. Isn't this fantastic? (laughs) So, now you've heard this news. Not only has an angel come down to you, but he's told you that you're going to have a baby, even though you are a virgin, and your barren relative is also pregnant. So let's see those reactions again. (laughs) What are you going to do? That's good. I like that. Well, guess what Mary did? She packed her bags and went on a trip. That's right. She went to see Elizabeth. And she also responded with these words. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel left. So Mary gets ready because she has decided she's going to go see Elizabeth. And she travels over hill and dale and she reaches Elizabeth's home. And when she arrives, Elizabeth confirms the angel's news and also affirms Mary. When Mary got there, Elizabeth, probably with a big smile on her face, said, Wow, you are blessed. And so is this child inside of you. I can't believe you've come to see me. My baby moved in my belly when you arrived. I'm so excited that God's word is going to be fulfilled in you. Again, as Mary, what would you do? Maybe sit down and have a cup of coffee with Elizabeth? Talk it through a bit? Ask Elizabeth some questions about her pregnancy? Nope! Mary doesn't do that. Mary sings a song. And the song she sings is a hymn modeled on Hannah's song in 1 Samuel 2. It's a song of praise. That's right, Mary responds not by questioning not what is going on, not by having a woe is me moment or attitude, but praising God for what is going to happen. She first says, my soul magnifies the Lord. Wow. If you were Mary, you might be able to verbally accept what's going on But maybe, just maybe, you have some concerns deep down inside of you. But Mary does not. She is essentially saying that her whole body and being is praising God for what is to come. Mary also acknowledges that she needs a Savior. 
She is grateful that she, a lowly, humble servant, would be chosen. She praises God for God's mercy and putting down the proud and mighty and uplifting the lowly. She acknowledges the Lord's faithfulness to Israel in keeping the promises that were made to Abraham. And she recognizes that the world will never be the same again because of this child that's in her womb. So what about us? How can we, over 2,000 years later, be motivated to use Mary as a role model? Here's some things that I thought of this week. We can be open to getting out of our comfort zones. When there's a new proposition or something that stretches you, take the opportunity. Mary was most likely surprised from the news that the angel Gabriel had, but she listened and she did not tell the angel, I've never done this before, I can't do it. Also, be humble. Know that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, is working in your life. God is helping you to be a servant like Mary and take up whatever mantle God wants to use your gifts for. Trust God when God thrusts you into unknown situations. Mary trusts God, not amid something that she sought out or even is excited about, but it's something completely unknown and unexpected and I would imagine terrifying for Mary. But she knows that God is using her, and she knows that through God, it can be done. And I think another thing we can do is pray for the gift of faith. Share the message of Jesus with others and how you see Him in your life. You may not sing a song like Mary did, but you can certainly share how you see God at work in your life and this world. And continue to praise God through your worship and your service. In this season of Advent, we continue our waiting. As we talked with the kids, our waiting for the Messiah to come. It's a time for longing for Christ to come to us as this baby in Bethlehem. And we also wait for Christ as we know He will come again and His kingdom will have no end. And we also wait for Christ in our lives today. Like Mary, we wait for God to make good on God's promises. Our old selves have been put to death through our baptisms, and we wait to see what God is calling us to do. We wait to see where God pushes us out to live lives in service to the one who died and was resurrected for our salvation. In this season of new beginnings, let's look at ways that we can acknowledge what God does in our lives, and let's acknowledge what God can do in our lives, and let's be open to the possibilities. And may we respond with our whole being, singing with Mary, my soul magnifies the Lord. Amen. I'm ready to rise in spirit and body as we join together in singing our hymn of the day, number 251, My Soul Proclaims Your Greatness, found on page 7 of the bulletin. Great 
wonders you have done for me, and holy is your name. To all who live in holy fear, your mercy ever flows. With mighty arm you dash the proud, their steaming hearts expose. The ruthless you have cast aside, the lowly throned instead. The hungry bowed with all good things, the rich sent off unfed. To Israel your servant bless, your help is ever sure. The promise of our parents made, their children will secure. Sing glory to the Holy One, give honor to the Word, and praise the power of the Most High, one God by all the Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in in God, God, the the Father Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was was crucified, died, and was buried. He He descended to the dead. On the the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Fill our mouths with laughter and our tongues with shouts of joy as we bear witness to the great things you have done. Give your church a spirit of gladness as we gather and as we are sent. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let the trees of the field sing your praise. Protect forests, orchards, rainforests, and all wooden areas from disease and deforestation. Keep us grateful for the gifts of oxygen, food, shade, and shelter. Merciful God, receive receive our our prayer. prayer. You love justice and promise your favor to those who are oppressed, brokenhearted, and incarcerated. Grant wisdom and compassion to those who work for public safety and for all who work within prisons, jails, and courts, that mercy may increase and violence wither away. Merciful God, receive receive our our prayer. prayer. Give us strength to pray for our world without ceasing and provoke us to, toward love and good deeds for all who are in need, especially those we name before you now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. For Mary, for Ken, for the family and friends of Ed. Provide for all without adequate housing, food, employment, or access to health care. Empower us as helpers and advocates. Merciful God, receive receive our prayer. Open our hearts to those who serve as truth tellers in our church and in our society. Bless leaders in church and society in their task of proclamation. Amplify voices of peacemakers, advocates, and especially those whose voices are ignored or marginalized. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With gratitude, we rejoice in the saints who witnessed to your life in all circumstances, in whom your spirit was not quenched, even in death. Through them, teach us always to hold fast to what is good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these and all of our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share signs of that peace with one another. Peace Peace with with you. you.
Peace. Peace be with you, Marilyn. Peace be with you, Carol. Peace be with you, Bonnie. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hey, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Michelle. Thank you. I just went to see Mary for Christmas. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Mary Lou. Peace be with you, Jane. Peace be with you, Terry. I got you already. I got you already. Peace be with you, Charlie. Peace be with you, Dave. Peace be with you. Peace, Donna. Peace be with you, Coda. Peace, Sherry. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. That's right. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you? Can't remember. Before. I'm losing track. I'm losing track. Peace be with you. Peace, 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 peace. As we prepare to receive this morning's offering, please know that we remain grateful for all of the ways in which you continue to financially partner with us here at United in Christ. Whether it's by using the offering plates as they come around this morning or by using our online offering plate through Tithely which you can access using the QR code in the bulletin or in the insert in the pew in front of you, which you can then place in the plates as they come around if you, you know, want something to do at that part of the service. Uh, but uh, as we gather for this morning's offering, please know we remain grateful for all the ways in which you can continue to support God's ministries through this place. At this time, we'll prepare to receive this morning's offering. <laughs> provider by your merciful hand abundant springs up from the earth receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people through jesus christ our savior amen, amen. the lord be with you 
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He... Our Lord Jesus fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection, taking bread and giving thanks to you said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon the gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share in this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here at United in Christ, we understand that this invitation to communion is Christ's invitation. And thus all who are gathered here are welcome at this table. We invite you to come forward in the center aisle, making two lines, to take a glass on your way forward, and then to receive the bread and to receive the wine, and return to our seats by the side aisles, placing the empty glasses in the trays as you go. Should you need or prefer, we do have grape juice and gluten-free wafers available. Please just let us know as you come forward. But in this meal, righteousness and peace meet together. Come, take your place at the table. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please be seated. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. On us. Thank you very much. Lamb of God, you take away the sin. Thank you very much. You the right side. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant Grant us peace. 
Michelle, this is the body of Christ given for you. And may you, no matter where you are gathered, know the blessings of Almighty God going with you this day given for and you. always. Amen. Claire, this is the body of Christ given for you. Again, this is the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Ben, this is the body of Christ body of Christ, Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Ken, this is the body of Christ given body for you. Of Christ given for you. Mary Lou, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Bonnie, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Carol, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Bob, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Ken, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Kristen, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Donna, this is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. Terry, this is the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Connie, this is the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. Rosemary, this is the body of Christ given for you. Diane, this is the body of Christ given for you. Given for you. Donna, this is the body of Christ given for you. Given for you. Jeff, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Dare, this is the body of Christ given for you. The candle, this is the body of Christ given given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Do you have a glass? The body of Christ given for you. There we go. Candle, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. Cheryl, this is the body, the body of, Christ of Christ given for you. Given for you. Dale, this is the body of the Christ, body of given, Christ for you. given for you. It's the body of Christ, the given, body for of Christ given for you. Amen. Mel, this is the body of Christ given for you. Rodney, this is the body of Christ given for you. Colby, this is the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Come over here. Excuse me. We'll come in front of the altar because there's not enough space for the trees. Chad, 
this and the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Please rise in spirit or in body. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christ's grace. Amen. Amen. Thankful hearts and voices raised, tell everyone what God has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and bear the name of Christ. Send us with your promises and lead your people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Generous God, in bread and cup you have revealed your glory for all people to see. Nourished by this bread, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. The God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope and the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in singing our sending hymn number 264, Prepare the Royal Highway. God 
God's word. Go in peace. Keep awake. Thanks be to God. The lights were off. Ah. There was a whole row of lights on.